what's up guys this is Tito back with another video and it may look a little bit different because I'm shooting this old video on the Poco F5 5G with the rear camera and the, at the highest resolution possible which is 4K 30 fps so that you guys can get an idea about the video quality over here if you can use this device for your YouTube channel or something right now I'm using it like that and today in this video this is gonna be about the latest build of the Evolution XROM based on Android 13 on the Redmi K20 Pro and this is gonna be the 21st May 2023 build the version 791 over here I'm gonna be showing you every details of it and I hope you get an idea about the ROM and the like audio quality right now you are listening in this first part of the video is coming straight out of the internal mics of the Poco F5 and right now let me just jump into the desk view as usual as I do so I'm gonna be also shooting that part from the Poco F5 but the audio is gonna be from the Zoom H1n on that so yeah, right now the audio you are listening is coming from the Poco F5. Let me in the comments how do you guys feel about the video and audio quality of this device. So let's continue with the Evolution XROM's review on the Redmi K20 Pro. So let's begin this video. This is again the 21st May 2023 build, the latest one as of right now. And the flashing guide and stuff will be present in the description, so do not worry. And yes, I did update it from the previous build which I was on. I just dirty flashed it and by the way, my device is decrypted and I have flashed the DFE. And all the important links to actually flash this from will be present in the description, so do not worry. By the way guys, let me tell you one thing that I did restore my Google App Data backup and after that yes, all my apps and stuff did restore perfectly fine. If you're switching to this ROM that you back up your SMS and stuff because the SMS and stuff will be not restored over here even if you are restoring your Google App Data backup. Call log and stuff all those things will not be restored so make sure you use a separate app like this SMS backup and restore to actually restore every data that you are willing to. Talking about the about section this is how it looks like we still have the Evolution X logo up top the Android version shows as Android 13. The Evolution X version is 7.9.1 that is the Lumpia and we have the Raphael name over here because this is K20 Pro and official build of course. The sequel patch is latest of May 5th 2023. The stock kernel here is the 4.14 Soviet star and the build date is 21st May 2023. And the build maintainer is of course Talix and we have the Linux status showing as enforcing. In the system settings this is how it looks like we do get a system updater from here you can check for updates. Let me go back in the gestures we have multiple things like the quick tap and stuff and if you are willing to see the options these are the options which are present for the quick tap or the back tap and it does work as you can see right now I just tapped so it shows quick tap rejected. We have the quickly open camera and stuff and we have the system navigation gestures. In the settings of it we have the advanced gestures there is the extended swipe action you can enable it and there is a long swipe timeout and stuff then we have these kind of like options for the long swipe. Pill length and pill radius customization is of course there. I have customized it to the fullest and this is how it looks with that. We have the IME button space, you can choose it to default, narrow or hidden. And we have the back gesture animation, haptic feedback, the swipe to invoke assistant is also working perfectly fine. We have the left edge, right edge customization. Then we have the amount of screen height to be used for the back gesture. Two button, three button navigations are also there. Then we have the one handed mode as well, that is working fine. And we have the double tap to check phone and stuff. Then we have the double tap to pulse notification, lift to check phone, then the press and hold action. And we have the swipe break screenshot that too is working perfectly fine. And there is the share, edit, delete and the Google Lens and the capture mode feature in case you need that. There is a pop-up camera settings, there is the sound effects which you can disable and the camera LED and stuff you can enable or disable as you like it. By the way, these are the stock apps which are present by default over here. Some of them was restored because I was restoring my Google App Data Backup. Like the Poco Launcher, Fresh Walls, Pixar, these were restored from the Google App Data Backup. The other apps that you are seeing are the stock apps of this ROM. So let me show you the stock launcher. Well, here we will get the Evolution X launcher, so that's really good. Because this one has amazing amount of customizations like in the mist settings. We have the background blur depth, allow home screen rotation, use taskbar option, then inside suggestions, of course, you can disable them. And we have the recent panel customization like the memory info, screenshot, lens, clear all, and the shake phone to clear all tasks option is also there. This is how the recent panel looks like and everywhere it gives you a haptic feedback, feels so awesome. And there is the screenshot lens and the clear all and there is a RAM usage status. And if I tap here, there is the split top and the freeform mode in case you want to use that. And there is that background glow looks so beautiful with this in the recent panel I have to say. And in the app drawer we have the themed icons, app search bar, icon levels in drawer, row height and the background opacity and stuff. Then we also have the home screen customization. There of course we have the lock layout, add app icons to the home screen, double tap to sleep, wallpaper scrolling and zooming. 
at a glance and the interface kind of customization and all of the other options you are seeing from the screen. And in the icons, of course, we have the icon pack customization, the notification dots and the icon size, font size, etc. options. And of course, this launcher does have double tap to sleep, it works perfectly fine. And just notice how beautiful it looks while I unlock. And I'll show you the fingerprint scanner speed thoroughly, but let me show you the quick setting panel right now. Even in the light theme, the quick setting panel stays dark like this. You may like it or hate it. I don't simply like it personally, but yeah, this is how it is. I have the Wi-Fi toggle right there, the mobile data and stuff. Of course, mobile data will work perfectly fine if you insert a Vault SIM card or normal SIM card as usual. But yeah, I don't have a SIM card in the device. That's why it's showing no SIM card over here. The Bluetooth toggle does show up the battery and stuff. So the Bluetooth battery status you can see on the quick setting panel and even the widgets and the status bar as well. We have the flashlight, the Google Home controls, auto rotate, and we have the battery saver. The screen recorder has multiple features like the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time. There is the enable HEVC option and the show touches on the screen and a lot more other features in case you want to use those. We have the nearby share, the mic camera privacy kind of stuff, the data saver, the dark theme, hotspot, nightlight, ambient display, everything is there. We have the anti flicker or the descending mode. Then we have the always on display toggle right here. The FPS info appears like this, it looks so dope over here. So yeah, I definitely like that. But the good thing is the FPS actually goes up to 90 Hertz over here still. So that is back earlier. It was removed, but yeah, right now you can switch the display up to 90 Hertz and we have the heads up, the reboot toggle, the sound toggle, and we have the screencast and stuff Then the airplane mode and the normal QR code scanner and stuff. That's pretty much it about the pixeling toggles. Now the app drawer, of course, you can swipe up and get the app drawer like this and you can search for any particular app. It will show up as soon as you do. And to the left of the home screen, we have the Google's discover page, which is working perfectly fine and swiping down anywhere in the home screen will get to the quick setting panel and the widgets. Yes, they are working fine. Like the battery widget, if you're noticing I've added are working and I can just tap here. It will go to the phone's battery. I can just tap here. It will go into the Bluetooth settings. So this is really insane and the like, clock widget and stuff, everything is working perfectly fine. No need to worry about all those. Also, the subscriber account widget is working perfectly fine. Do subscribe guys if you haven't yet. By the way, the wallpaper I'm using is from the Fresh Walls app. Let's talk about the stock camera. Well, right now you are getting the Leica camera right out of the box. And as you can see, there is the Leica vibrant and authentic both options. And there is the 0.6x lens or the ultra wide angle. Then the main sensor and the 2x telephoto zooming option is also there. Also, there is the 5x zoom option in case you want to use that. So yeah, right now it looks so beautiful with all these lens switching options and stuff. And here, let me actually show you. There is the video settings. You can shoot up to 4K 60 FPS if you want. That's really insane. But yes, the K20 Pro does have the 4K 60 FPS. Right now, I'm shooting this video on the Poco F5, which does not have 4K 60, only has 4K 30. So I'm using that. By the way, we have the Pro mode and stuff. And if you swipe up, there is all the other modes like the Vlog, Vlog Pro, the Super Moon option, then the sticker avatars, long exposure, multicam, all these functionalities are still here. No need to worry about it. There is the documents mode and stuff. You can definitely use the enhanced mode if you want. And in the Pro mode, you can also shoot videos up to again 4K 60 FPS. And that's just insane for this kind of device. And yes, if you are wondering about the front camera, let me switch to the portrait mode and switch to the front camera. And as you can see, the front camera is working perfectly fine. No need to worry about the quality and stuff. The quality is amazingly well. So yeah, I would say this is the MIUI camera or Leica camera gives you one of the best like picture qualities, best optimized picture qualities, I have to say for the camera sensors. Let me just take a quick picture and just notice the picture has been taken. Just notice how optimized the pictures are. So yeah, pretty much I would say really good quality pictures that you can shoot with this Leica camera, which is present by default again. Now let's talk customizations. In the Evolver settings, we have the themes. In here, we have the theming settings. Then we have the vibrant, expressive, all these other colors. If you want to skip this customization part, you can definitely do that from the timestamp. But yeah, let me just show you one by one. We have the color source. We have the home wallpaper or lock screen wallpaper. Let me just reduce the brightness a little bit. And we have the luminance, the chroma factor, the tint background and stuff. Then we have the dark theme right here. You can schedule it and there is the pitch black mode and stuff, all those other options. And the quick setting style, you can actually change. You can put it to shaded. And with that, this is how it will look. It will also change the notification panel styles as well. So this is how it will look. So pretty much you can customize all of the things regarding the quick setting panel over here. And even the headline body fonts, plethora of fonts are here. As usual, Evolution Hex has one of the most amount of customizations that I have seen. We have the nothing dot font and stuff in case you want to use that as you can see. 
and we have the icon packs these are the options and then we have the signal icon styles and again plethora of options for that and even the wi-fi icon styles are present and these are the options for that icon shapes are also there and these are the options even the nav bar style you can change if you're using two or three button navigations in the status bar we have the status bar lyric then we have the clock style you can change it to right left or center and you can customize that thoroughly no issues i have customized it if you're noticing let me go back we have the status bar logo the network traffic indicator the battery style you can change i have been using with the icon landscape right but you can also go with the left one or all of these other options plethora of options are there for the battery style and even the battery percentage you can put it to inside the icon or next to the icon however you like it we have the battery bar right here then we have the status bar icons headset bluetooth extra icons are there even the vaulty icons and stuff are there no issues with that let me go back we have the show data disabled icon then the show wi-fi type and stuff and as you can see the wi-fi right now shows as five so that simply means i'm connected to a five gigahertz wi-fi network and here we have the colored icons notification count the notification icons and all other options that you are noticing from here in the notification settings we have the heads up the reticker the notification sound if active kill app button and we have the blurred media artwork the battery light options are there the do not disturb battery light and stuff for the like notification LED on the front camera and we have the vibration on connect call waiting and disconnect so in call vibrations are there there is also the blink flashlight for incoming call and the blink flashlight for <laughs> notifications as well in the quick settings we have the hide level the label text size the vertical layout the columns customization is there for portrait and landscape both we have the quick setting header image you can actually enable that if you do that plethora of options are here just notice how many options are there i can choose it to 51 as you can see just notice how many options 64 total options are there and again plethora of options are there for the quick setting header image as well in case you need to use that just notice there is also the battery style and stuff for the quick setting panel as well then we have the battery percentage then we have the battery estimate and the quick setting quick pull down and stuff you can enable the brightness slider position you can have it on show always and to the bottom this is how it will look like with that and you can also change the brightness slider style to the field option okay so right now as i have changed the quick setting panel style i think it's not showing up but yeah with the default option it will show up when you are using the default quick setting panel style i guess and we have the auto brightness icon animation style animation duration and the interpolator kind of customization show data usage clear all button and stuff is also there for the notifications and you can change the button style between these nine options so yeah plethora of options are here no need to worry about it in the power menu we have the disable power menu on lock screen advanced reboot and stuff you can enable for the power menu and this is how it looks like you can tap on advanced and you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from here in the gestures we have the system settings and again we have the system kind of gestures let me go back we have the ambient wake gesture click to take partial screenshot Toggle flashlight options are there, long press power button toggle torch, the double tap to lock screen and on the status bar option is also there. And in the lock screen we have the UDFP settings, in here we have the always on fingerprint, that's the screen of FOD and we have the UDFPS haptic. Then the icon pickers are also there, these are the icons which are present. So yeah, plethora of icons are there for the female scanners and we have the custom animation as well. And these are the animations i have been using it with a pulsar one there is the edge lighting then the lock screen clock font you can also change and again just notice plethora of options are here for the lock screen clock font i have been using with this one it looks pretty bold i would say but yeah we have the custom lock screen clock color as well you can change the clock font color and we have the double line clock position small clock lock screen charging info always on display scheduling option media cover art blurred media kind of thing and the ripple effect and the fingerprint authentication and error vibration everything is present in the lock screen customization in the buttons we have the navigation bar then we have the show arrow keys while typing and stuff show volume panel on the left side and the volume panel timeout is also there Power app volume control option is there then we have the reorient volume rocker wake keyboard cursor control and the volume steps as well in the animations we have the charging animation right here in the screen off we have the default crt and scale option and we have the power menu animations right here and you can choose whichever you want in the miss settings we have the game space the smart pixel launch music upon headset connect the pulse option is there and we also have the unlimited google photo storage unlock higher pc in games and the netflix spoof as well huge amount of like important customizations are still present and we have the jitter ignore window secure flags if you scroll down more we have the show cpu info two-step icon then we have the sensor block per package and the wake lock blocker alarm blocker and the usb configuration you can set it to file transfer if you want so that is pretty much it about the customization of this rom
Now let me show you the battery settings. This is how it looks. We have the battery percentage right there. We have the pixel battery usage chart, then the battery saver, adaptive preference, smart charging, battery charge warning, and the battery optimization per app you can do. And we have the sleep mode right here. Then also if we scroll down mode, we get to see the design battery capacity, the current battery capacity, the charging cycles, and the temperature. Yes, I do have a brand new battery almost. That's why I have only 73 charging cycles. And here, let me show you with the Aku battery app I have tested it with and the screen on time that I'm getting its estimated numbers, but yeah, still just notice I've been getting about seven hours plus of screen on time, which is huge for a device like K20 Pro. And the screen off is seven days. So that's more than a week, I would say. And the combine use it shows as six days, but even like two to three days of combine usage will be insane. And in the health section, for me, it shows as 90% of the battery. Don't think it has degraded this much because I charged it fully from like 15% to 100. Maybe that's why it's showing like that. But yeah, pretty much you can see the health of my battery. And with that, I have been getting about seven plus hours of screen on time. And that's insane. And yes, the fast charging and stuff is working perfectly fine. No need to worry about that. In the sound and vibration settings, we have the media call ring, etc. volume controls and the link ring tone and notification kind of things. If you scroll down more, we have the vibration haptics and there is the ringtone vibration pattern changing option. Then we have the notification kind of sound and all other like tones changing option and the part app volume control is present right here. We have the dial pad tone, screen locking sound, charging sound and stuff. If you scroll down more, we have the newer features like the silent media mute and stuff. You can use these features if you want. Let me go back. We have the Mi Sound Enhancer. There is the Mi Audio Direct with the logo. It looks beautiful. And we have the Choose Headphone Preset option. There is a Youth Edition and all other headphone options you can choose from. And we have the normal preset options as well. Then we have the Smart Scene Mode. Also, the Enable Hi-Fi option is there. If you have a really great pair of headphones, you can use that feature. And we have the haptic feedback. You can change the intensity of it from right here. And we have the clear speaker option as well. If your speaker sounds muffled, you can definitely use this one. By the way, the volume panel looks like this. You can expand the volume panel. You have the app volume right here. And of course, you can put the phone to vibrate or silent from here. And let me show you, you can switch the output device from right here. And this is how it looks like. It looks so beautiful to this phone. You can just switch from right away. And here, let me show you how it looks like in the lock screen. Okay, so this is how it looks in the lock screen. And if you play and pause, there is the newer Android 14 kind of effect. And there is the like wavy kind of seek bar. It looks so beautiful with animations and stuff. And you can also change the output device from right here. In the lock screen, for some reason, it is at like 30 FPS, it looks like. But yeah, in the quick saving panel and stuff, it's perfectly fine. The animations just look so beautiful. Let's jump into the display settings. We have the brightness level, adaptive brightness, extra dim, and the lock screen kind of feature. And in here we have the control from lock device. That's for the Google Home controls. And the shortcuts, you can also change the right button and stuff. You can also change to this do not disturb Google Home camera, QR code, flashlight, and the none option is also there in case you need that. I'll show you that, but in the change wallpaper section, there is the feathers and the on-device wallpaper. And we have the 16 colors for the wallpaper and basic colors. And by the way, we have the dark theme, the themed icons, app grid, and the shortcuts are present again. And we have the fonts, the icon packs changing option right here. We have the double line clock, always show time and info, the always on charging option, and the lift to check phone and the screen of FOD is also there. Let me go back. We have the screen timeout up to 30 minutes. Then we have the pocket detection and the dark theme and stuff are also here, of course. And we have the display size and text of Android 13 normally. And the live display option is also there. There is the outdoor bright sun mode in case you, you want to use that. Anti flicker, reading mode, color calibration, everything is here. Let me go back. We have the night light. You can change the intensity and schedule it if you want. And we have the allow window level blurs. The deceiving option is there separately. And there is a minimum and maximum refresh rate. Also, the low power refresh rate right now you can change. But I would suggest keep it on 60 hertz for the low power refresh rate. And we have the prevent accidental wake up screen protector mode. Wake up on plug. And we have the desktop mode as well. And you can use it on a TV or PC. I don't think you can use it on a TV because this device does not support the HDMI kind of thing. With the usb port not really sure but it has this option and we have the custom refresh rate part app you can change it up to 90 hertz over here now let's jump into the security in the settings of it we have the quick unlock in case you are willing to see that in the mode option there is the app lock and let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed right now but let me just clear all the notifications and here double tap to wake and stuff is working fine no need to worry about it and the lock screen clock definitely looks so dope and tapping on the fingerprint scanner as you can see it unlocks so yeah even the screen of a 40 is working perfectly fine no issues whatsoever just notice how fast it unlocks it's always on display i just turned it on and with that yes the fingerprint scanner speed is working perfectly fine and the edge lighting as well as soon as i tap the fingerprint scanner looks so dope and the pickup 
yeah i think it is working and in the lock screen we have the google home controls and you can just tap over here tap and hold and that's how you can get the like lock screen shortcuts working just tap and hold and as you can see it is working perfectly fine and even from the lock screen the few minutes cannot is working now let me show you the face unlock for that i have to double tap to wake and swipe up shows recognizing face and as you can see it unlocks took a little bit more time than usual but yeah let's try one more time so it's taking a little bit more time but yeah it is unlocking fine let me try the app lock and for that this is how the ui actually looks for the app lock i just tap the few bit scanner and as you can see it gets me into the app and wherever i left it so app lock face unlock and the finger bit scanner everything is working perfectly fine here the safety net if you are wondering about that yes it is passed right out of the box so banking apps will not be a problem on the latest build of evolution x also the dear man 4 stays as l1 here so you can stream netflix or amazon prime videos in 1080p without any problems and with the Google Photos unlimited storage backup turned on, it actually shows this pixel can backup unlimited photos and videos. So that's really great. Let me talk about some of the things. Yes, the 90 hertz and stuff is working perfectly fine. In the test UFO website, you can see it's running at 90 hertz. And in case you are wondering about the performance in Twitter and stuff, yes, for scrolling as well, it is working perfectly fine. I did not see any kind of major issues or there was no force stops or force reboots at all with this particular ROM. On the latest build, it has been one of the most like smoothest experiences that I have seen even for switching apps and stuff, no issues whatsoever. The RAM management has been great and the Android score and the Geekbench score you can see from the screen with a CPU stress test to get you an idea about the overall UI performance by looking at its benchmarks. So I would say yes, for sure this has been one of the best ROMs or one of my favorite ROMs personally if you ask me for the Redmi K20 Pro and because it has so many customizations and the ROM is so stable, it gets consistent updates. That's why I feel the Evolution X is still one of the best ROMs for the Redmi K20 Pro. Let me in the comments what do you guys think and what do you guys feel about this video because again I'm shooting this video on the Poco A5 to get you guys an idea about the overall video quality and the focus and stuff from this video so again let me know down there in the comments how do you feel about this video and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet share this video to your friends if they want to get an idea about the poco fi's video quality and the evolution x from the redmi k20 pro huge thanks for watching this video guys subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is tito from kdn Dex signing off for today i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye now